how to end that self-sabotage. One of the greatest forces in life that is opposing you and so many other people is an economy. It's not other people. The greatest force holding you back today, right now, are the words that you allow to come out of your own mouth. The Word of God tells us that the power of life and death is found in the tongue. That means that the words that you are speaking are put into operation in your life to bring about good or bad. The life you are living right now is partly the result of the words spoken and declared out of your own mouth. Just meditate on that for a moment. But if you want to discover the abundant life God has for you, you have to learn how to declare the word of God over yourself. In the book of Job, God reveals a way of taking charge of your life by commanding your morning. Every single day you wake up and you take a breath into your body is a day that you have the power and ability to alter the course of your destiny. Not just for now, but forever. You can forever change the quality of your life the life that you lead by the words that you speak. Have you ever felt that you were trapped in a cycle and a struggle of lack? Well, you can get off of that merry-go-round of poverty, sickness, and depression, and you can do it now. When you change your words, you will change your life. What I'm sharing is not just a theory. This is proven, practical system taken directly out of the Word of God. It has the power to transform your life, anybody's life. It transformed mine. And so today I want to share some secrets with you from commanding your morning. Morning is the end of a night season. It is the coming of daylight, the breaking of a day, the beginning of a new day, the dawning of a new start. Morning to me is the dawning of something new. Morning is an opportunity to see a new day that you have never seen before as you arise from your sleep and you open your eyes. Morning happens when you have a revelation of the dawning of something fresh, even if it's prophetic, even if it's a prompting, but something fresh is about to happen. Either you desire it, you want it, or you know that it's just around the corner. It is something fresh that is beginning to happen in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your children, in your government, in your nation, in your health. Morning is the revelation that you can have something be something or do something more than you have ever ever imagined it is the endless possibility of God's unfolding truths that are designed to reveal the greatness on the inside of you and the potential that is hidden in the womb of the morning morning is another chance to cultivate your gifts that you have been given divinely by God. It, it is an opportunity for you to fulfill your purpose, to maximize your potential, to start all over again. I love Psalms and in the book of Psalms 143 verse eight, it says, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. And so I always say, morning is the beginning of something fresh and something new. Just like the dawning of a new morning, is, it means that the old has passed away and the new has just begun. When I think of morning, I came to the conclusion that so many things happen in the morning. And many of us spend all of our time dragging stuff that we had, should have put to bed the night before, the day before, the week before, and pronounce a benediction upon it. But what do we do? We drag it, and the next morning is the same drama. I always say, do the same, get the same, do different, get different. And when it comes to you commending your morning, you've got to understand that the morning also brings light to something when the concepts that you are dealing with is difficult. Jesus is the light of the world. We don't have to walk through life in the dark. Once you have God in your life, you got light in your life. And once you understand that concept, you will have a difficult time not comprehending or embracing this simple truth. 
God, in the middle of the book of Genesis, is creating. And I see a continuous creative act. But when I go to the beginning of the book of Genesis, it begins with the earth being without form and void and darkness being upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moving upon the face of the water. And here is God. He didn't just get up and complain. Oh, look what the devil did. And nothing is in order. And it's nothing but black space. But he goes right out in the middle of chaos. And he pronounces this word. Let there be light. And the Bible said there was light. Light illuminates. And so when I think of the morning, I think of you having an opportunity divinely given to you where God is able to illuminate things. I've also discovered just from studying a little bit about physics that light doesn't create anything. It illuminates. It's already there. But if it's hidden in darkness, you are not able to see it. When you command your morning, things that could be right in front of you are illuminated. When I was growing up, I, I always had a problem finding. I couldn't find my sock. I couldn't find, find my shoe. And I would be the little one in the house out of seven kids crying. I would cry over everything because my emotions were so sensitive. And I would be crying. My mother would say, Cindy, what are you crying for? And I would say, I can't find my shoe. And my mother would go right in front of me, pick up my shoe and say, is this, this what you're looking for? Do you not know that when my mother used to say to me, Cindy, what you were looking for was right under your nose? I had no idea that what she was saying was not referring to the shoe. She was referring to the fact that not only you could not see your shoe, but you kept saying, I can't find my shoe. I can't find my shoe. I can't find my shoe. And guess what? I couldn't find my shoe even though it was right in front of me. When you command your morning, you're gonna wake up to a world of unlimited possibilities and opportunities. And you have to understand that sometimes we are blinded by our past or blinded by our emotions and the opportunities are going to be right in front of us. When you command your morning, you are giving God an opportunity to illuminate those things that might be hidden to you. When you get things illuminated to you, you want to be able to obtain insight and also wisdom. And so when you command your morning, you are ask, actually inviting God to give you insight, to give you um, understanding, to give you the ability to see things even in a different light. When you feel overwhelmed as if you're wandering around in the darkness and you can't figure out what to do, stop, say, let there be light and there will be insight. There will be revelation. The book of Isaiah 58 verse eight says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. I know I want to wake up to many different rewards. We introduce you to a concept of illumination, let there be light. This is what God gives you every single morning. He wants to talk to you. He wants to be able to illuminate your life. Let me ask you a question. What illumination or insight have you received this morning from God? Have you stopped long enough to command your morning and wait for the answer? Every single morning, you can ask God, you could decree and declare, let there be light, and then you can ask God to give you insight, to give you insight in your business. You want to have relational insight or parental insight or political insight or spiritual insight or insight about your marriage. I, I found out that there are so many people that come into our lives with hidden agenda. And so as you are commending your morning, ask God to reveal to you the agenda of everyone that is coming into your life. Those of you that are industry leaders, when you say, let there be light, God will reveal to you your industry uh, trends and the shifts, and he'll give you problem solving insight as well. 
One of the things that commending your morning will do also is to help you to take the mystery out of life and living just by commending your morning. In the book of Genesis, Genesis, of course, is a book of beginning. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water and God said he spoke it. He spoke light into existence. The words that you speak are force, uh, forces of energy. Albert Einstein had this amazing way of simplifying some of the most complicated physics concepts and equations. He came up with this formula, you probably heard it, E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light. He believed that energy and matter were interchangeable. And the word of God confirms that in Hebrews 11, one to three, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. And through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things that we see were not made by things which do our pair. Can you imagine that? If you take hydrogen, and oxygen, H2O. You cannot see hydrogen, you cannot see oxygen, but when they come together, you see water. And just because you cannot see hydrogen and you cannot visibly see oxygen, it doesn't mean that it's not there. And H2O, when it comes together, your words and your faith, when it comes together, it's going to manifest. You could decree it, you could declare it, you could commend your morning, and it's going to come to pass. Let's look at another portion of scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. The scripture says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let's turn to another scripture from out of the book of Romans chapter four, verse 17. It says this, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who believe, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. For real? Well, let's blend this from out of the book of Genesis or with the scripture from Genesis chapter two, verse one to four, and let's see if we can illuminate this and bring some light. The scripture says, thus the heaven and the earth were finished and all of the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made and rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that he had rested from all of his work, which God created and made. Then it goes on in verse number four, very important in the discussion. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, that the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till it. That word is till abad work and it's the same word that god is using for himself he finished his work now in this text the bible states that god finished his work the hebrew a uh, book of hebrew said by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of god and if the book of genesis chapter one says that he was speaking what was the work that he was doing? It couldn't have been a work with his hands because the Bible would have clearly said that. But instead, what he was doing, he was working his words. When we talk about commending your morning, you are working your words. You better work those words. Your expectations, your thoughts, your belief actually manifest this vibrating energy into form. Your words are working for you every single day. Let me ask you this question. When you awaken this morning, how did you work God's word? You've got to be able to understand that your words form the reality in your world. And if God created you after his image and after his likeness, if he worked his words and changed his world, you can work your words and change the reality in your life. The Bible says, and I want to remind you, that he is the God that calleth those things that be not as though they were past tense. You've got 
to work your words. Frame them and phrase them in such a way that they bring you your greatest desire. If you don't expect to see it tomorrow or next year or the year after that, do not talk about it today. This is the way that your thoughts and your words become reality. How is that? Thoughts are things. Words are things. What you speak is going to turn into a reality eventually. You are literally creating your reality with your words. You are doing it every single day with the thoughts and the thoughts are fueling your words and your words are framing your world. Jesus did this everywhere he went. In one particular story, there was a lack that was there. There were thousands of people. And what Jesus did, he commanded the situation by commending his mouth, changing what he said, and he literally turned a delicatessen into a buffet. And Jesus did that just by pronouncing a blessing onto the limitation. Now, in that story, we were talking about bread, but he actually blessed the bread. When you command your morning, you have the ability to bless your day, bless your business dealings, bless your affairs, even bless your children and your marriage. To bless means to hollow or to empower through verbal affirmation. It means also to invoke one's favor upon or to verbally approve. To bless means to invoke the omnipresence and the omnipotence of God upon a thing, upon a situation, or upon a person. When you bless something, you actually release the potential that is within that thing or person and give it permission to manifest. It also means that you give the ability or, or God the ability to activate his power in allowing something or someone to express its divine purpose. Now, when you bless also, it means that you have the ability to reverse or prohibit a curse. God calls us royal priesthood. And one of the things that a priest would do was either to pronounce a blessing or a curse onto something. What we want you to do is to be able to pronounce blessings into your life by commending your morning. Also, that word uh, bless means to prevent negative circumstances from occurring and to bring to an halt or even break negative cycles of failure, of death, of sickness, of rejection, of loneliness, of lack, and of poverty. It means that you are able to decree the goodness and the provisions of God over a bad situation or even turn negative tides into multiple streams of blessing. The Hebrew nation actually placed a very high premium on the prospering power of the benediction, so much so that they would pronounce a benediction or speak well over everything. They would bless everything. I mean everything. They would bless their food. They would not only bless their food, they would bless their children. They would bless their day. They would bless their donkey. They would bless their toe, their eye. Anything and everyone whom they believe that God needed to visit or they wanted to draw to that thing or situation or circumstances, the power of God, they pronounced a blessing upon that thing. They uh, bless their land, their servants, their experience, their circumstances. Any occasion was an opportunity for them to bless. So let me just go a little further and, and take a look at how this uh, coincides with the whole thing of commending your morning. When we speak about morning, again, we are not just speaking about the time on a clock or we're on a calendar. We're talking about before things happen, morning. The scripture says this, that morning is there to bring you joy. Your morning brings joy after a night of distress or after a night of sorrow. It will make you seek out, inquire, look into, and consider all the new options that await you. You don't have to repeat a cycle over and over. You can speak blessings into your day. You could change the circumstance. You can invite the omnipotence and omnipresence of God. You can alter a, th a thing or situation just by altering what you speak. Commending your morning, why morning? 
The morning will make you seek God early to find out all the hidden treasure that will accompany you in the course of the day. It is God's time to show you the world of unlimited possibilities and potential. Psalm 30 and verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I just love that, commending your morning. The morning is a time for you to reclaim your joy. One of the things that I do when I wake up, I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And what are the hidden treasures that you have placed in the womb of my morning? Stop dragging yesterday's stuff into your next day. Get up and command your morning. When you awaken, you are awakening to a realm of unlimited potentiality. What are you expecting today? What do you want your day to bring you? command your morning. Let's just take one more point. Our time is going by really quickly. I want to give you one more uh, inspirational thought for you to think about commanding your morning. Morning brings breakthroughs. Things are about to change in your life when you start changing the way you speak. It is the dawning of a new day when you get up in the morning. And during this season, there are some things you will have to wrestle with, and sometimes you have to wrestle with them alone. And unless you wrestle with those things, you will not see the blessings that God has downloaded into the equation of your destiny, your purpose, or even time. There, there are things that God has locked up in the realm of the spirit awaiting manifestation. And those things are time sensitive. In the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 24, the Bible says this, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with the man until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. When you begin to command the morning, you are going to have proof that your life has changed because it's going to change the way you walk out your reality. So as he wrestled, if his, if his leg was out of joint, it means it altered the way that he walked through life. Let me tell you something. You need to get ready because your life is about to be altered. The things that you wrestled with when you command the morning, you are going to have a breakthrough. And this is what Jacob said. Listen, I don't care how much you wrestle with me. I am not going to let you go except you bless me. You're talking about having authority to command your day. He said, I don't care how much authority you think you have over me. You are going to do exactly what I say, and I'm not going to stop wrestling until I get my breakthrough. What were you wrestling with last night? What were you wrestling with the day before? What about last week? Is it financial? Is it emotional? Is it marital? Are you wrestling with the issue of your children? Are you wrestling with the issue of how are you going to keep your mortgage going? I'm telling you, the secret lies not in just the wrestling, but it lies in your declaration. Command your morning. Cause the resources of God to begin to spring forth. Cause the fellow grounds of your life to be broken up by commending your morning. Could things be the way they are because you are the way you are? What one thing can you change that can change everything? You could change the way you speak about your life. You speak about your home. You speak about your finances. After all, when you command your morning, you change your life.